we use chimeras a lot in when we make uh, mouse models. Um, whenever we generate new transgenic mouse models, we do that by making chimeras. So we, chimeras are being made all the time. But this is a problem in categories, categorization. What do you classify models? Another problem is uh, chimeric mouse models. As I was just saying, we use uh, chimeras um, we work with mice a lot. And there are some mice which contain human DNA. One really uh, important example is, is called the Xenomouse. Um, and this is a mouse that actually contains the human HLA domain, which is used to make antibodies. So we use this Xenomouse uh, to make antibodies, sort of like we do with other mice. But instead of mouse antibodies, it makes human antibodies. So we can use antibodies from this mouse in human applications without worrying about you know, it actually uh, cross-reacting with the mouse molecule, so it's a lot safer to use. But the problem is, how much human DNA can you put into a mouse before it's no longer a mouse? One gene, two genes, where do you draw the line? So this is, you know, this is sort of a problem to think about. And there's yet another problem. Stem cells do not actually have to come from in vitro fertilization. We can use somatic cell cloning to generate embryonic stem cells. Uh, all you have to do is remove the nucleus from a somatic cell, any cell in your body, Implant that nucleus into an unfertilized fertile cell or egg cell, uh, and you get an embryo. This is used to make Dolly the sheep. Uh, and many other species, clones have been made with lots of different species, cats, I think dogs too. Um, and this basically shows how it's done. You've got the oocyte on, on the left hand side, you pick out the nucleus, you add the nucleus to the cell, and you get the same exact process. You get the morula, you get the processes, you get out of your cell mates. Wait, hold on. You got cloning? This is cloning. Okay, because they're doing, they're talking about this for women who, for example, um, let's see, you can take, they can take your own DNA, your husband's, and stick it in someone else's egg. Is that? Um, um, I don't know about Because your, your egg is healthy. Right. You, don't, you, you can't use that. You could clone yourself. I don't think you could, you could you couldn't do what's necessary to get your, your husband's DNA, but, oh, okay. but you can clone yourself. Oh, but anyways, this is another way to get embryonic stem cells. So is this, I mean, these are embryonic stem cells. These, these could become another person, but potentially. But, you know, they're derived from, you know, a cell might pluck out of my face. So they have to the glasses, Well, they do. They do form glasses. And they, they do. When they take them, they are as glasses. Yes. I mean, you could, you could generate these in vitro and, you know, take them out. Um, so the, these are problems that we have to sort of deal with, and, and I'll mention some stem cell alternatives. Um, uh, as you mentioned, um, it is possible, they've just shown just last year, about November of last year, there's a paper course to show that you can remove a single cell from the eight cell stage and develop that into uh, an embryonic stem cell culture, and that the, the what you've taken it from, that morula in that one, can go on and differentiate, or go on and become a blastocyst and become a fully you know, implantable fetus. And this was viewed by many to be a problem for this, because we are actually destroying the embryo of the cells. The problem is, well, it is still a risk to the embryo. I mean, it's, you're, you're, you're pulling cells out of something, but there is still a risk to it. And so the Southern Baptist Convention actually rejected this as a viable alternative, as an ethical alternative because of that. And also scientists are skeptical that the derived cells uh, will actually be as potent as the traditional DNA cell on it because of the different ways that they're trying to manipulate. But there's another possibility, and this was just um, just a little while ago, there was uh, a paper published to show that stem cells can be recruited from the amniotic fluid. And then this might be uh, uh, an ethical alternative to using embryonic stem cells. But there's problems with this too. Uh, Amniocentesis, you can stick a needle in there and grow it myself. That's a risk to the fetus. You get an increased risk of miscarriage if you do that. So is that an ethical alternative? And the other problem is, you know, Rob, we don't know exactly how potent they are, and they're, they're certainly further down from the blastocyst level in their stem cells, and so we don't know if, they're, it's, if it's as potent as the embryonic stem cells, so it's, it's not really a good alternative. And the other ethical problem, um, that's common with any truly good cell line 
is wherever, whatever source you get them from, if you get them to that point where they're indistinguishable, truly indistinguishable from embryonic stem cells, they are still going to have that potential to develop into a fetus. So you run into the, whatever alternative you come up with, if you can get them to that point, then you've also you've always got that integration and exam. So is there a solution? Uh, uh, is, there a, uh, is there a possible solution to this kind of thing? Um, part of it is, and I'm going back to what I mentioned about the chimera and the cloning and all that, is we're sort of beset by what uh, Richard Dawkins actually calls the tyranny of the discontinuous mind. And this is derived from platonic idealism, uh, like that branch of philosophy, in which we think that there is this thing, and then there is this thing, and there is there's a wall between them. And this thing cannot turn into this thing. And there, there's, there's uh, something is either this or that. There's no in between. Science does not show this. Science does not show discrete transitions. Everything is gradual. Nothing is black and white in science. Um, I gave a presentation recently about the problem of species, in which the species as an evolutionary concept is problematic for this exact same reason. Because we can, sh we can see examples of a continuous gradient in biology, in current extant species. And so even classifying a cat as a cat and a dog as a dog can be problematic. Humanity itself, the concept of humanity, is really not a scientific and meaningful concept. What does it mean? You know? Is it anything more than just a subjective concept? Well, I don't think so, but I don't think that really matters. I think as a subjective concept, we have to assign that. We can't measure that as something. We have to decide for ourselves what is human and what is not. And that's not something that science can really 